Well, how long have you been, been smithing? Uh, I retired the other day and was 64 years. 64 years. Right to that, looking in that fire, and I can see you pretty good now, too. Yeah. I look in that fire for many years. Yeah, yeah. I know it's changed a lot, the, the role that the Smith has played here. Is oh, the man just changed. Oh. And what was it like when you first started? I and mean, what, what, what did the blacksmiths do when you first started working All in the All the blacksmith was doing, repairing the farm implements and the, uh, making tools, sharpening tools, bullying wagons, repairing wagons, shoeing horses, and mm -hmm. you name them. If you have any knowledge about the Western show and Western shows and how the, the, the part the blacksmith played, and you can imagine what Charleston would look like. Mm -hmm. And it took, you were saying there were how many Smiths in this, on the peninsula? Right in the peninsula here between the Ashley and the Cooper River. Mm -hmm. About 15 blacksmiths, they all was busy. Right in the peninsula, not counting the plantations, because they had their own, most of the farmers, mm -hmm. the plantation side, their own blacksmith. Mm -hmm. And so the Smiths in town were doing what you were talking about. They were, they were shoeing horses and... Shoeing horses and keep everybody happy. Yeah. Yeah. How much, uh, how much um, architectural work was being done then? I mean, it, w were they staying busy building railings and gates? And no, no. Most of that used to come from out of town. Uh-huh. Whereabouts? Where? Uh, a lot of pieces it came in here from England on this ship. And really? I was told. Uh -huh. How did you get started working on gates and railings and stuff? Uh, the blacksmith shop was only about two or three blocks away from my, where I was living. And uh, the shoemaker shop was right around the corner. The tinsmith shop was here working. And other craft shop was here. But I choose the blacksmith shop, you know why? Mm. I love action, and a lot of action was going on in the blacksmith shop. A lot of action was going on in the blacksmith shop. Sparks and lots Sparks of Sparks and the horse kicking up, and you got oh, to put yeah. the twist on them. Uh -huh. that's, I said, that's where I want to be. <laughs> and the old man hired me. After school, I got $2 a week after school. Uh, but I keep shining shoes until I got about 14. And I put down the shoe shine box, newspaper, put it down, and just start making a little thing on my own. Do you have any idea how many pieces you have in Charleston, how many gates and railings? Well, the, out, the one that ship out of town, and uh -huh. the, I average around 200 and something, gates and fence and other uh, other pieces like benches, and uh -huh. I average around 200. Wow, uh, that's a lot. That's a big, a big life's work there. Yeah, that's a lot of work, you know. Do you have any favorites? Are there ones that you... Uh, like in particular? Well, the kids in school ask that question How do they? so often. It's the pizza, it's the some of the, all of the pieces you made, which piece you loved the best. And I'm sold on the snake gate, snake gate, the iron gate, the bird gate, mm -hmm. fish gate, palmetto uh, tree and different things like that. Mm -hmm. But I, kind of so long though. Simplest piece I made, the fish gate. You know why? Why? Because I made, I took my forge up in Washington, D.C., and I made the fish gate up there, the fish and stall gate. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It isn't the prettiest piece, but to me, it's the most important piece, and it's the most sacrificial piece, because I didn't have, I wasn't in the shop here mm -hmm. on Lawrence Street or mm -hmm. the other shops where I was, but I had the forge, the fire, anvil, a hammer, an electric portable grinder, right on the lawn, just like you out there. Uh-huh. Uh, about, well, during the American Folk Life Festival mm -hmm. fair. Mm -hmm. And you made it during the fair? During the fair. Wow. Thousands of people seeing that yet day by day come by. Yeah. One lady, and I told her what I was doing. She was a tourist there, spectator, and 
I told her I was making a star on fish gate and she see the piece. And she stayed in Washington until I finished it, really. When I first went in the Rhode Island work, those the people by giving me a job or, uh, to make those gates, um, I wouldn't give nothing for those people because they took a lot of pride when you draw it up. They took a lot of pride in doing the drawing and the architectural work mm -hmm. and um, give it to me. I think that's what get people in Charleston and through the eyes to use my service. Mm -hmm. And so you see, I used to be in the blacksmith shop at the age of 16. I went in there at the age of 13. But when I got to the age of 16, I started helping the old man and he started pieces and I finished it. And um, people would come by then, spectators, and say, Philip, what you gonna do now? He said, um, Mr. Thomas and Howard on East Bay, he buying trucks and cars. There won't be any more horses for you to shoe. You in trouble. <laughs> and they keep telling me that, but they were telling me the truth. It was just, time was just changing just that fast. Mm -hmm. And I start thinking, but I listened to them. But the old man was listening too. So one day he called me. I like to do my work on the outside of the shop in the summer, mm -hmm. take it on the outside. And I was on the outside, he was in there to the forward work, and he had those guys uh, telling me this, the real story mm -hmm. about the future, mm -hmm. what's going to happen in the future. And not only that, it was changing just that fast. Mm -hmm. So then, you know what I done? After things changed, the old man called me one day and, come here, boy. He said, don't you listen to what those guys telling you out there about the blacksmith going to become a lost art. He said, don't you listen to that. He said, always going to be something for the blacksmith to do. Mm -hmm. And he told me that about 50 years ago. And he was right. And he was right. <laughs> he saw the handwriting on the wall. He saw the handwriting on the wall. <laughs> and I couldn't see. But I listened to him. Mm -hmm. it's, it's good to listen sometimes. Yes, it is. Yeah, it's good to listen sometimes. <laughs> so, all of the other blacksmith went away. They went off and to other jobs. I went to New York, and I was left here alone doing blacksmith work. People live around here, know the old trade was still going on, but people in inner cities and they didn't. They thought the blacksmith all was out of business. Mm -hmm. Just disappeared from the face of the earth. Disappeared from the face of the earth. Well, we're glad you had, and we appreciate you talking to us, Mr. Simmons. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. 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 I. Glad I got them. I was broadside.